So thank you to those who could join us live today. Um, just want to continue on our progression this at the end of this year, wrapping up what we've been focused on, really getting to know at an intimate level KV Core. Uh, the last three trainings that we have today, next week, and then the week between uh, the Christmas and New Year's holidays, this is where we're going to focus. Today is unique in our conversation in lead generation because it's a an EXP platform called Making It Rain. Everything else that we've sort of talked about, all the add-ons that we've discussed in the KV Core platform have been managed, um, produced, and built all by the KV Core folks. Making It Rain is something that's being built, managed by EXP folks uh, in contrast. So we're going to spend our time just educating you on that program today and how you might leverage it, how it works, um, and what maybe setting realistic expectations for what impact it could have on you getting home buyers and sellers into your funnel. Then next week, we're going to talk about uh, something that I think is always a lot of fun, creating your own newsletters. Um, that's you, you do one and you feel like you climbed a mountain and then you realize how many different ways you can use. Uh, this is yet another free tool accessible to you within your KV Core platform that can really have a positive impact on you, your sphere, your client interaction, and overall your ability to convert to client and contract. Okay. And then finally, we're going to wrap up by just making sure that you understand ways that you can leverage KV Core on the go. That you don't just have to be sitting at a laptop or computer to make it work for you and to work the leads, understanding all of the other sort of mobile aspects of this platform that can be working for you. So that's where we stand for the next few weeks. So what I want to do today is just, like I said, dive right into making it rain, um, which is EXP's lead generation platform. It works in conjunction with KV Core. So if you have not, if you have some catching up to do with some of our past uh, trainings, if your profile is not completely set up, if you have work to do on your website, if not all of your um, settings are set um, to the optimal points to work with making it rain, then you should probably say, all right, I need to pause and get myself set up in those areas before I proceed with considering this campaign. This campaign can work from both an individual agent level and also from a team level. I'm going to concentrate primarily on the individual agent level, but if you have questions about how this might work from a team standpoint, feel free at any at any time in the conversation to jump in. Or if you're watching this on recording, absolutely feel free to reach out to me with any of those questions one-on-one. -on -one. I leveraged this program. I first began participating in it as an individual agent to understand how it works and to sort of gauge the value and, and the, um, the flow. And then once I felt comfortable with it, I then converted it. And we've had it in place in our team for about six months, not quite a full six month period coming up to that. Um, there have been some changes in the platform in the course of that time that sort of put us off course a little bit and we're getting back on track. So I can share some of that experience with you um, as we talk about the program as well, give you a heads up. Um, part of the reason that I really like talking about this program and like educating people on it is because with all the things that we've talked about, and there are a number of free tools that I, I want to make sure that you're leveraging in KV Core, but there are some other platforms that we talked about that are that can be a little bit pricey and can involve an extended time commitment, a subscription of at least three to six months. What's great about making it rain is I think it's sort of that sweet spot in the middle, reasonably priced program. Um, and we'll get into that a little bit more in a minute, but it's also a month to month. So you can join the program today, whether you're an individual or a team, and you can make decisions to pause your campaign, to cancel your campaign, or completely scrap it and start over um, at any time. So I think that's great and works to your advantage. So if you feel like you want to give it a try, or maybe you've already given it a try and have decided with the market that maybe the first quarter of 23, you don't want to make this spend. Um, not that, you know, I think really many of us have the opposite approach that that's when you really want to ramp up. But again, I understand budget and financial constraints. So just knowing that you have that flexibility, I think makes this program a little bit lighter and easier to entertain than many of the others we've talked about. 
there are two ways that you could go about entering the program. Um, you can look at the Home Search Leads platform, and you can look at the Express Offers Leads platform. You must, and there's no like exception to this, you must be Express Offers certified to pursue the Express Offers Leads Making It Rain program. Your campaign will not commence if you do not have that certification. We'll talk a little bit more about what that program looks like, but it's important that you understand. So if you are not Express Offer certified right now, then you really want to concentrate on the Home Search Leads platform and what that might mean for you. Um, one of the things that we're going to cover in January will be all of the ways that you can leverage EXP programs to expand your wealth opportunity within the brokerage. And we'll revisit Express Offers certification as, as one of those opportunities. So if you are interested in that, just sort of table that thought and we'll follow up in January. Another great feature, in addition to you know, the flexibility with your time commitment, the leads are yours. So once they come into your KV Core, unlike some of the other lead platforms that you might be familiar with, like mm, Op City comes to mind, for example, these leads belong to you. Once they come into your KV Core, they are yours. If for any reason you were to leave the brokerage, then you're simply talking about downloading all of your contacts in your KV Core, and these leads go with you. There's also no additional fee that goes to EXP for converting these leads, okay? You might have, if you're on a team platform, like what I have, there may be an adjustment in team split, but in terms of your split with EXP, nothing changes. You're just paying the flat fee to EXP, and then the leads are yours, the commission is paid as it, as it normally would be under any other circumstance. Uh, as I mentioned, there's a new dashboard. I'm gonna show you a little bit about, you know, how what that looks like and how to access it. Uh, and also make sure to provide you the link. I'm going to stick it in the chat and then um, tell you a couple of other places where you could go to get more information. Um, and the last thing I just want to mention before we start to look at it is that there's flexibility here. So in addition to being able, being able to pause or cancel a campaign, let's say that you make decisions about what areas that you want to target and then those areas aren't working for you, you have the opportunity to modify or make changes. And you can also ramp up your budget. Um, let's say that you're starting at the minimum, which with Home Search Leads is $250 a month. And let's say that you're finding you're getting a good conversion. Maybe you've tapped into a particular town that just seems to be on fire in terms of click rates and conversion rates, then you might wanna ramp up. Um, because the Google ads are run based on your budget commitment, based on the expectation of how ads convert to clicks, convert to registration, converts to leads, okay? So let's take a look. Uh, let me wanna show you the dashboard and give you a little bit of an idea of how this works. May I ask a quick question, please? Yes, absolutely. Um, where are these leads? Where is the program drawing these leads from? That's a great question. So it depends on each of these two platforms. And I'm going to show you a little bit about what the lead progression looks like. But to answer your question quickly, when you talk about home search leads, they're going to be rooted in Google ads. So you're going to identify if you sign up for this program, you're going to choose as an individual agent, two to three towns. If you're going from a team standpoint, you can typically, your budget's going to ramp up so your number of towns can ramp up. But as an individual agent, generally two to three towns, and you wanna be very careful about the towns that you select. You wanna to choose towns that are larger in your area, not smaller, that tend to have in an average, maybe traditional sort of normalized market, if there is such a thing in, in this day and age. You wanna to choose towns that would typically carry at least 20 to 25, maybe even 30 listings at a time. Again, I recognize that that's a challenge in this market, but think more broadly, think to like a normalized time. You don't wanna choose a very small town with a very low number of um, listings because that will affect significantly performance of your Google ads, okay? You're gonna get a lot fewer clicks with a smaller town that generally carries fewer listings. You also wanna make sure that you are choosing towns that are in your MLS area. 
So if I'm in bright MLS, which is primarily, you know, my South Jersey area, Burlington, Camden, Gloucester County, and I thought, oh, I really want to break into, I don't know, the Cape May market. Well, Cape May does not have a significant presence on my MLS, okay? And my KV core, my search function on my KV core works through my MLS integration. So you want to make sure that you're choosing towns for this platform that work within your MLS. Don't choose towns, you know, if you're trying to branch out into other geographic areas, make sure that you address the MLS integration with your KV core first. In other words, get signed up with that additional MLS, get that MLS tied into your KV core account and into your search function in your website, and then pursue making it rain. Okay. So um, let me show you the dashboard and then I'll give you a little bit more explanation, Lynette, about how that progression happens. Um, you know, what the ad looks like and how that lead can then click on that ad and end up as a as an actual lead and uh, client in your KB Core. Okay. So when you first are interested in signing up, I'm going to go ahead and share this link uh, in the chat. And I will also provide it at the end with a follow-up. So if you are not already on the distribution for um, all of our stop procrastinating notifications, feel free to just drop your email in the chat and I'll make sure that you get added so that you get this link as well. There is a 30 minute course. I'm pulling a significant amount of the information from the 30 minute course because I think it's important that you just get a sense of what the programs are about before you invest the time, energy and dollar into pursuing it. Um, but you'll get the information that I'm sharing here on a more detailed level directly from the EXP resources that manage making it rain. The lead person being uh, someone by the name of Kevin Kamiski. Okay. Not only will you learn about the platform and how it works, but you'll get some really good tips on lead conversion. So it's, it's absolutely a good resource and a worthwhile 30 minutes to watch that video. Then if you're ready, you can proceed to the dashboard and I wanna show you what the dashboard looks like. This is relatively new to me. Um, I've been involved with the program for probably nine to 10 months, maybe even slightly longer, might even be closer to 11. Um, but the dashboard is really only about 45 days or so um, new to me. So. Um, when you set up a platform or when you want to proceed to set up a platform, you would go to this dashboard by clicking on that link that I showed you here, and you would proceed to set up a new campaign. Once you get to that point and you're ready to sort of hit the go button, you can set up a campaign in about 10 to 15 minutes, and then it takes effect in another maybe 15 to 30 minutes. They typically say 15 but I would say give it a little bit longer. But here are those two platforms that I mentioned, either Home Search Leads or Express Offers Leads. Again, just want to emphasize, if you are not Express Offer certified, don't even bother with this program right now. You need that certification, okay? If you want to go ahead and get started, then again, you're going to identify two to three target areas. Be mindful in the target areas that you select. One of the ways that you can test out those target areas is by going to your actual website and creating a search for that town. So if you're trying to decide um, between Somerset and Somerville, for example, I'm just throwing something out there, then maybe what you should do is go to your website, search for homes in Somerset, search for homes in Somerville, and see what type of results you get for each of those towns. Again, you're looking for more robust result results as opposed to less because more robust search results will produce greater conversion, greater registration, and help really increase the powerful punch of this program, okay? Once you get started and you have a campaign running, you can come to this dashboard. I'm hoping that they continue to expand it um, but you'll be able to come to this dashboard and see some beginning analytics of what's happening with your program. So in our case, now we've gone through because of the, the change in dashboard and the change in platform that happened uh, right around the end of the third quarter, beginning of the fourth quarter, um, we've had 
some challenges that our team has had to overcome. So, um, but what you can see here from the dashboard is that we've received almost 3,000 views on our campaign and we've gotten uh, over 120 clicks. Now this is, um, if I could just go back and show you real quick and I will grab you in one second, Millie. So we've had, like I said, we've had a couple of challenges with getting onto this new platform. So if you, if, if you were in my situation and we're trying to make sense of this dashboard, what this is telling me is we started one program on uh, the 21st. The program started and then for whatever reason ran into errors. Um, and we couldn't figure out why. So we agreed to sort of suspend that campaign and start fresh. So that's why I have this second one here. And you can see over on the right-hand side how um, one ad status is green, one is red. That's because I have this second one that's running. So just in not even 10 days, we've already on this um, updated campaign gotten 3,000 views and 120 clicks. So we're off to a, a good start. Clicks does not equal leads, registrations, okay? Clicks is people clicking on the ad and getting to the website, okay? So now let's take a look at what that means. How do we get from 125 clicks to actual leads? Let me show you what the lead progression looks like, and hopefully, Lynette, this will help give you some more explanation too. So a home buyer is going to be looking on Google. Let's say that you chose a town, um, one of the towns that that we are having some success with again is Tom's River. So let's say somebody searches homes for sale in Tom's River, Tom's River homes for sale, buying a home in Tom's River, something along those lines, okay? The idea is that EXP's Making It Rain program is gonna create an ad-driven um, search result that will appear at the top of <clears throat> the uh, web searcher's results. And when they click on it, they're going to be taken to your EXP website. When they come to your website, they will have the ability to begin their search. The search parameters will initially be set to whatever town Google ad they clicked on. So if they clicked on Homes for Sale in Tom's River, then the parameters for the search will be set to Tom's River. It won't be like they're starting from total scratch. Okay. At this point, it's very important, and I reiterate, things that you have done up to this point to prepare your KV Core account to receive leads will impact what happens next. You have the ability to determine when a lead has to register on your site, how many homes they can click on before they have to register. And you also have the ability to decide whether a lead has to provide you with a phone number or not give strong consideration to those two things at this time if you if you want to pursue making it rain. I um, with this type of program, despite the fact that KV Core suggests that you might get more leads by not requiring a phone number, if you are paying for a lead generation service like this, I think it's absolutely imperative that you secure a phone number. Are you going to get fake numbers. Yes, it's a fact of life. People provide fake, false information. It happens. But your ability to connect with that lead increases when you have multiple avenues to pursue. So not just an email address, but also potentially a phone number where you can text or call them. Okay. Having those multiple channels will exponentially improve your ability to contact and connect with that lead. The other thing is that I strongly encourage you to stick to um, immediate registration as opposed to allowing someone to, you know, click through two or three properties before registration is prompted. Again, some of this is going to be about your personal preference. I'm just telling you a little bit about my experience, and you can also lean on EXP and their best practice suggestions as well. But so what happens is at that moment, where the lead has now clicked onto the website, if they choose to continue their search and are prompted for their registration information, they're just going to enter their information and then they're going to continue with their search. What's happening simultaneously is now that lead is coming into your KV Core as your lead and you have the opportunity to connect with that person. You can look at the lead in your KV Core account, know what they're searching, know what properties are appealing to them, what they're clicking on, 
And then you want to act as quickly as possible to reach out to that lead to try and um, hopefully get not face to face, um, but uh, like live person communication on the phone, ideal, absolutely ideal to uh, get dialogue going and put that client on a path to become a potential, you know, closing. Okay. Now, the one thing that I'm going to really stress is setting your expectation for your experience with these leads. With the Home Search Leads program, you're talking about platform with Google Ads that will generate more buyer leads, also the potential for some seller leads, but it really is rooted in people that are either looking to buy a home or secure a mortgage to buy a home, okay? The way that the leads, or excuse me, the way that the ads are built. Um, you will get some home sellers organically, you know, because people who are buying a home may also need to sell a home, but understand that the expectation is buys. You will get people that are ready to buy in 30, 60 days, but you will get even more people that are just sort of curious or browsing six to 12 months out. So this platform, Home Search, is going to be for the long haul. Don't expect to come into this program, sign up for 30 or 60 days, get your leads, get your closings, and, and move on. This is a long-term, nine-inning commitment, um, as my husband would like to say. So you really want to understand that going into it. It also, you'll see... Um, plays into, and, and this is where I want to spend a little extra time too, some really good resources that the Making It Rain um, people provide to those who are considering this platform is setting your expectation for the number of leads that can come in through your website under this Google Ads platform. So notice that you can start at 250 You have the ability to ramp up to $500 a month You'll notice that it says that you can go up to five target areas. If you are at the $250 a month level, which is the minimum commitment, dollar commitment, I really recommend that you start with two to three towns. If you're finding success um, or you're not, maybe on the flip side, you're not seeing enough results and want to ramp up and add one or two additional towns, then do that. But initially, I would start with two to three towns and really try to um, um, master the platform, the flow, and get a sense of how these leads need to be managed on a regular basis. You'll notice that you're looking at 15 to 25 leads a month coming into your KV Core account. Making it rain does not guarantee number of leads, okay? They only suggest that this might be your result. So you'll see as you move up in dollar budget, then the expected number of leads per month will increase. From a team standpoint, you're typically looking at a, at least a $750 to $1,000 investment. Um, and I would not encourage anything more than $1,000 until you see the level of results that are getting you at least the 60 leads per month um, consistently. Okay. Um, Millie, let me circle back to you. You had a question. Two questions. So one, when you say go to the dashboard and set up the campaign, is this a separate campaign from KV Core smart campaigns or are they tied to like you go into your smart campaigns and KV Core set that up and it attaches? So that's my first question. Great question. Um, and then I have a second one after that. Great. Okay. Let me answer that one first. So that's a really terrific question. So what will happen with, and let's go back to that lead experience for a minute. What will happen First, you set up your KB Core and know what campaigns, what client campaigns, what touch campaigns you like in KB Core. In our case, there are two particular campaigns that we like that relate to these leads. Um, there's a conversation starter, and then there's a long-term nurture lead, and I'll circle back to that in a minute. So it's having campaigns within your KB Core those campaigns are designed to touch, to reach out to that lead in a variety of ways over a period of time. Separate from that, if you actually wanted to launch the Making It Rain program, then you would have to go to the Making It Rain dashboard here 
and set up a making it rain campaign. When you set up the campaign here, you need to be ready with lead campaigns within your KV Core that tell KV Core, okay, if I have a lead that comes in on hashtag EXP leads, this is the campaign that you should automatically start that lead on. And I can I can show you that um, in detail. So the like I said, the two campaigns that we like, there's a conversation starter campaign, and you'll find those all in the marketing section. So if you're in your KV core and you go to marketing and you take a look at smart campaigns in the KV core library, just look and search for the word conversation. But let me show you um, what this campaign looks like, conversation starter. So think about what's happening. You have a lead that's clicked on a Google ad, gone to your website, generated a search. They've registered so they can continue to peruse the search results. And now they've come into your KV core. You can have it set up that the conversation starter immediately kicks in for those hashtag EXP leads that come in. And that hashtag will automatically be assigned to them. So you'll know exactly where that lead came from, that it wasn't just an organic visit to your website, it wasn't somebody that clicked on one of your landing pages, this was an actual making it rain lead. So what this particular campaign does within KV Core, it's a very compact period of time that literally starts three minutes after they've registered, and it basically extends to the first seven days. Okay, this happens to say day 14, but really day 14 is just you having to make a decision about what to do long-term with this lead. But it's really concentrating on getting some sort of connection, some sort of engagement with the lead in the first seven days, okay? If you don't have um, a lot of success or you find that, okay, this is definitely somebody who's gonna be long-term, then you wanna make sure that you have process in place. When you get that task on day 14, then you wanna be able to convert them to another campaign longer term that makes sense for wherever that lead is in their home search. Um, and, and the one that we're using right now on our team, which I strongly recommend and can share with you, is an actual 18 month campaign that we built, leveraging some of the other features of other campaigns that we liked, but then building in a lot of um, tasks that really get you personally connecting, not so much scripted connecting or um, automated, but really making sure that there's a sufficient amount of the, you know, the personal you, personal touch you, the, the personal email, the personal text message, the phone call attempt, maybe a personal video, all built in over the course of 18 months to again, hold that client's hand through their home search process. Okay, so I hope that helps clarify. There are actually two separate things happening. You have your Making It Rain campaign, which is essentially your launch of this program. You saying, yes, I want to pay for and enroll in this program. And then there's the idea of having to have campaigns within your KV Core at the ready, set up to go, to get going with these leads as soon as they come into your KV Core account. Perfect. That makes perfect sense. Okay. And then my second question was, I see that the prices are $250, $500, But then when going back to where you were at with your particular dashboard, I had $1,000. So yeah. is there like a per month? And then on top of that, when you make the campaign, an additional charge for that um, campaign that you created? So it is, if you're an individual agent and you commit to this program, Part of what happens when you sign up, not only are you choosing your target areas, but you're choosing your budget. So if you choose $250, it's very transparent. It's $250 a month. You may actually end up experiencing something slightly less than $250, depending on the number of clicks that your campaign gets. But the campaign should cap out at $250 on a monthly basis. The reason that you see $1,000 on my campaign is because I'm on a team platform. And I'm looking at, I think we have eight towns that are currently running active. And I have about half of our team that are interested and want to participate in receiving these leads. So from a team oh, standpoint, if this is something, yeah, if this is something that you were entertaining from a team standpoint, you can set it up in KV Core that if, if there are seven or eight towns, agents can be assigned to each of those towns. And I want to show you um, what it looks like when a lead comes in, because not only will you know that the lead came in through the hashtag 
from making it rain, but you also will know which town they were, they were searching at the time that they clicked on an ad. So I want to show you, we just received one a couple of hours ago. Um, so you'll notice here, if you can see it, that the hashtag automatically assigned was EXP leads. So that's my first clue that it's a making it rain lead. And then if you come over and look at the source column, you'll see that it's MIR, that's making it rain under my name for my um, team's platform, and then the town. So the town that this person was searching for was homes for sale in Cherry Hill. So within our team, we have a subset of agents that are assigned to different towns on a round robin basis to receive that lead. If this was you as an individual agent, then obviously all the leads are gonna come into your KV Core account you will still have the ability to know which town they came in on. So let's say I chose um, Cherry Hill, Haddonfield, and Pensalkin. I could look month to month and see how each of those towns were performing, how I was getting leads. Um, and if I saw one town continually underperforming, then I can go in and modify the campaign. So again, it's that flexibility of not being locked in to one specific set of towns. So if you find a town is underperforming, then you can just swap it out for another. What we've talked about on our team and what I encourage you to think about is don't be rash in changing out your towns because you never know what could be in play in the results that you're getting. Um, for example, we had uh, a, one of the towns that we're doing was Tom's River and Tom's River had insanely strong results over the summer and then pulled back a little bit and now has ramped up again. Um, and initially without, before we did any research and really sort of dove into what was going on, my initial thought might've been, okay, does this have something to do with the seasonality of Tom's River with people looking down the shore during the shore months, no longer having an interest? Um, let's let's make sure we understand that. I didn't just jump in and say, oh, we have to take Tom's River off the list and replace it with another town. I didn't have the information to understand if that made sense. But once I started researching it with the Making It Rain resources at EXP, we understood that the issue was really more about what was happening with this change to this new dashboard, how it was affecting our campaigns, how it was affecting, there's some coding that happens in the background. So what I what I love, in addition to all of this um, flexibility, you know, functionality, you know, sort of a budget friendly relative to, to, to some other programs, all these things I love about this. But on another level, what I love is having a brokerage resource that can help me work through some of the challenges of making the program successful. Um, I've gone to KV Core many times with different questions and have gotten my questions answered. Sometimes I've had challenges and have had to go through like engineering folks to get things resolved. And I've had, I've had success there. Um, but I definitely feel like the support and service that I get from the EXP people with making it rain is much more intimate, much more personal, and a little bit faster too. Um, they're very accessible. The two main people that you would work with, Kevin Kamiski leads the platform. And then there's a second person, Sheila. Um, I think I'm going to get her last name wrong, but I think it's Holyfield or Holderfield or something. Um, but Sheila's great. You could get on either of their calendars through a Calendly link to be able to schedule like a one-on-one -on -one 15 minute uh, session so that if you're having trouble or if you have questions or just want to talk to somebody, you have the ability to do that. So all of those things I just really like about this point. Rochelle, you had a question. I'm sorry, I'm a little winded today. <laughs> That's okay. I, I'm actually writing questions as I go along. I have a few. I hope you don't mind. No, um, absolutely. So the first question is, if I sign up for this, do I need to have my own KV Core phone number, like the purchase, or will it, or will it come to mind? Because I'm still confused about that whole KV Core phone number again. That's great. And that was actually a question that Millie had. Um, Millie had a couple of great questions that weren't related to making it rain that we were going to cover at the conclusion of our initial training today. So let's talk about that one now, the idea of a smart number. Mm -hmm. um, it, there are, I think, sort of two trains of thought on whether you want to pursue getting your own personal smart number um, or whether you, there's no need for it in your business. 
If you have any expectation that you want to use the KV Core platform to call and text your clients, then I strongly encourage the $25 or $27 investment in a personal smart number. If you don't purchase that personal number, then the calls and communication that you make will come from the shared number um, that EXP has. Okay. Now, there's, you know, not written anywhere, but there's sort of this general idea that yes, if the lead is yours and it's assigned to you in KV Core, that it doesn't matter that you're using that general EXP number, the system will still broadly understand that that communication is intended for you, that it's personal to you, that that lead is yours. I have no evidence to say that that doesn't work. Okay, so I'm not suggesting that there's um, fault in that, but I just think if you are going to leverage KV Core for calling and texting, having a number that's only yours, that people can only identify with you, and that also gives you the ability to choose an area code in your local area that feels more familiar to the people you're communicating with, I think those are all good reasons to pursue your own smart number for the 25, like I said, 25 or $30 a month. If you use your cell phone and you really aren't making the calls from within the KV Core platform and you're not leveraging the platform for personal text message um, and are using your own private cell number, then you're probably not going to see a a really compelling reason or value in getting the personal smart number. Um, So it's going to be a lot about how you manage your leads that determine whether you think that that might be worthwhile. Just sounds so confusing with the two different phone numbers. And I mean, I really haven't like, you know, I've been busy, like I'm busy, (laughs) but just setting up my account and everything and doing that. But I haven't um, like figured out how to do, or I haven't like figured out if I want to do the phone number or not. Um, I guess my other question is it's 250 a month. But then you made the comment about the number of clicks. So the bottom line is, no matter how many clicks we get, it's still two hundred and fifty a month, right? It ha- one has nothing to do with it. It should not be more. Th- it should not be more than two hundred and fifty. Okay, it, it less. It, right. okay. it could potentially be less if oh. you have. Let's say that you choose towns that are not achieving their maximum click. So um, on the back end, they don't advertise this, um, but on the back end, there are analytics and sort of parameters that say for $250 a month, just like what I showed you on the dashboard, that I had a certain number of views. Um, Just get there so you can see it, that I had a certain number of views, that certain number of views translated to a certain number of clicks. um, And those certain number of clicks translate to a certain number of registrations. Okay. So on the back end, um, the EXP resources, they understand technology. Okay, so their wheelhouse is more technology, maybe less real estate, if you will. So they understand and have expectations of what this number will be and what this number will be for that $250 value. And they'll actually, like on the back end, unadvertised, sort of price out a cost per click. So if you end up getting less clicks than what they consider optimal for the 250, then you may see a variation off of your 250. I'm not saying it's going to be a lot, but you might see an invoice for $235 and change or $245. But once they understand that your budget is 250, once you've hit your 250, then essentially your campaign will drop off for the rest of the month. But again, they're experts in technology and analytics. So they're looking at making sure that they're building a campaign for you based on your target areas and based on your budget that will give you well-rounded results for the entire month that will get you to your $250 committed spend. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. No, it does. So and you then- could end up seeing a, a, an invoice that's slightly less. And so they bill in arrears. So you won't get your first bill until you've um, seen your first 30 days of campaign. And when you okay. get that bill, that you'll be idea. able to- Right. Yes. Yes. Okay. You'll be able to see your clicks. And again- you'll know by looking at your KV core where your leads are coming in from, what towns. 
So you should be monitoring that and making decisions, not, not quick to judge decisions, but you know, maybe once you have 60 or 90 days of information, make decisions about whether you should be changing out some towns or whether your towns are performing exactly where you'd want them to. The and other thing that you can do with analytics to see where you're performing is there is a space within your KV Core dashboard under business analytics where you can go and pull reports based on the source. So you can look at your source performance here and you can pull in either anything that's that says EXP leads, or you can pull in any of the sources for your making it rain towns. So if your three towns, like I said, were Cherry Hill, Pensacola, and Haddonfield, you can pull those sources in and run a report that's going to give you analytics about how each of those towns are performing. Okay, so there are a number of, of things that you could do to make sure that you're seeing what you want to see for the spend that you're committed to. And they would max out at the 250, right? Like I wouldn't yes. see a bill for like a thousand or whatever. No, no. <laughs> okay. you commit to that budget and they honor that budget. Yep. Absolutely. And they're and creating the ad for us, right? They're yes. creating the ad. So we don't have to like do any kind of like verbiage or photos or nothing. 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 Okay. All you have to do is set your budget and select your towns. And so again, make sure that you're putting the time into choosing towns that will get you good results. So here's examples. Once you come to that dashboard and set up your program, you'll actually be able to see samples of the ads. They'll show you and I can just click through. So this is what it would look like to a web, you know, a web search results. Like if you were looking up homes for sale in Tom's River, these are some of the different ads that you would see. So it's not going to be no photo. There's no photo then. No photo. No. It's like but a well has somewhere when when I'm like someone someone's on the computer, right? There's no photo. It'll just appear at the top of the search results among the ad sponsored results. Okay, and then once they click, they're going to go directly to your EXP website. And that's where they will be able to continue their home search and actually look at properties in Tom's River. So I have a really dumb, dumb question here. No dumb questions. <laughs> at what point? Okay, so suppose someone clicks and then they're in the KV Core, they gave their phone number and did all that fun stuff. I know KV Core tells you, you know, or it does the automatic first text and whatever, but what do you tell your, your agents? Like, you know, do they, are they supposed to like call right away? Are they supposed to follow everything that KV Core is telling? Because I think it said on their day to call the lead or whatever, like at what point question. are you pouncing yeah. on them? So, and that's going to vary from um, person to person. So if you put 10 people in a room, I can promise you that you're probably going to get at least six different answers. So it's all about what, what different people have experienced in terms of best practice. There are people who acknowledge that when you get a lead like that who is searching, you are getting notification that they are searching within moments. So the likelihood that they are still searching at that moment is very high. The faster you can react to that notification that you have a new lead, the greater your chances are for successfully connecting with that client and at least having a conversation. So you can talk to people that say the first 10 to 15 minutes is critical. And then you could even look at the opposite end of the spectrum where the making it rain people, when they publish their best practices, they say that you should be making at least two to three attempts by phone within the first two to three days of receiving that lead. In our case, for our team, what I really emphasize is 24 hours because I recognize that it's impractical for a lot of people, especially because of our team makeup. We have a number of people that are not just full-time in real estate, they're also full-time in other professions as well. So the idea that you could just on-demand call every lead within 10 minutes, I realize is not practical for every person all the time. But I think the first 24 hours is really, really critical. So I wouldn't wait until day two. Um, I would, if you are going to participate in this program, I think you need to set up your own mental mindset that you will be taking action on every lead within the first 24 hours. If you don't, then in my opinion, it's kind of wasteful spending. That'd be my how recommendation. Do you, 
how do you how do you like this compared to like Zillow? Like how do you feel? Because you made the comment that this is more like long term nurturing leads, whereas Zillow, you know, they're putting you on the phone like right there or Op City or whatever they are. Yeah. Um, do you like is there a preference that you have out of any of the online leads type of platforms? That's a really fair question. Um, I can tell you, we participated in Zillow up until about a year ago. Um, we did that with our prior brokerage and carried that over for a little while um, once we made the transition to eXp. I am not, we have not participated in Zillow Flex, and that is something that I will be circling back to in 2023 as an opportunity to potentially pursue, because that's very different from the Zillow platform that we were on. But if you compare what was happening with Zillow on our prior platform and compare it to this, my spend every month was about $7,000 and my results in terms of number of leads was very similar. Now, the lead quality for Zillow was much higher in say 2017, 2018, 2019 but we saw a dramatic drop in lead quality um, probably beginning around the time of the pandemic to the point where those leads were requiring very much the same level of nurture and time commitment that making it rain leads are. So if you just look at those two pieces of information in silo, would you rather spend $7,000 or $1,000 for essentially the same number of leads at the same quality level? Um, that was the conversation. But having said that, Zillow Flex, um, I know some other people in our space that have had good experience with it. So that's something that I want to understand more and have a goal to actually, we're going to look at bringing training on that as well once I explore it further um, sometime in the first quarter, 23. So I would never rule out other options I just think from a cost standpoint, especially as an individual agent, um, and as an individual agent with $250, you have the ability to get two to three towns, right, in your Google search. With Zillow, my budget was $7,000 for, I think, one or 2% market share of one town. Right. Okay, right. So, so that, I think, broadens you a little bit. I have a team that um, services, towns. Really, at this point, I think we're in, um, we have a significant presence in five different mm -hmm. counties. So I wanted something that was, that was better able to handle the geography of our team. So for all those reasons, I think making, making it rain was a really good option for us. We are kind of young from a team standpoint, less than six months in. So I can probably tell you better six to 12 months from now, um, you know, whether this is something long-term, but I just think from a, if you really want to get the leads into your KV core, this is that, you know, it's not quite the 500 to $750 that we've talked about with some other programs, but it's doing something more than just putting yourself out there on free platforms to try and draw those leads into your funnel. Right. And is there any way that we can have a lender help like, Caught, uh, offset the cost or not yet? So in this case, what happens is you'll receive an invoice. Um, when you receive the invoice, you can either go in and pay it, or if you don't pay it within, I believe it's 10 days, then EXP will automatically charge whatever credit card you have on file for your, you know, your other billings, like your $85 a month and so forth. So, um, if you were working with a lender, uh, you know, I'm, you can't automatically assign the lender the bill, but you can go into the invoice and enter a different credit card to pay the bill. Um, so how you might, however you might handle that, um, but you cannot explicitly tell EXP to bill somebody other than you. Right, right. Yeah. So I guess the short answer is probably no, right? Because we can't really charge a lender on our own, I don't think. Like, like I know, like, so like with Zillow, I'm, I'm new to Zillow. I just signed up just to see it. And um, so, yeah, I think we put, we were able to put two credit cards in there. Um, yes. So we can't do that here yet. 
you can't um, automatically add a credit card other than the credit card, like I said, that you're getting billed, but you do have a window of time where you can go in and manually post payment. So if you oh, use, okay. utilize that window of time when you can manually post payment, then you can choose another credit card. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. Oh, okay. And whoever's credit card you choose is right. up to you. I think, they, <laughs> and making it rain like years ago, I think there was a commitment, wasn't there? Like a, there was a certain commitment um, because I looked into that I think a couple of, I don't know, like a while ago, I thought there was, but maybe now that's good that it's month to month now. So you can kind of get an idea. I think it's great. I think I just, from, from so many aspects, I like how flexible it is. The fact that you can change your towns, that you could change your budget, that you can pause or cancel at any time. And you can even cancel at mid month um, right. and you'll just right. get a prorated invoice for whatever time your campaign was active. Your, you know, your program was active for that month. So it really does have, um, a level of flexibility that you don't see in too many other places. Right. So from and that standpoint, I think it's a worthwhile consideration. Right. And I know Zillow Flex, I don't think they allow, uh, that's only for teams at this point in time. They don't offer that to yes. agents. So. Yes. So interesting. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, sure. How about you, Millie? Do you have a question? Yeah. I just want to run back to the smartphone really quickly. So mm -hmm. um, in KV Core, when it says like send mass text, that is coming, and if I don't, if I do not have a smart number just yet, it's coming from a generalized KV Core number. Um, coming from the number that's assigned to you, and I think that that number would be specific to your state. Um, so different states will have different numbers, and they use that number also for assigning leads that come in from state standpoint like if somebody comes just goes into the general exp website and does a search and they're searching um in new jersey then that lead is going to be round robin to an agent covering that service area and it will all leverage that new jersey smart number that's automatically assigned if you choose not to buy your own um, okay and it won't preclude and you if you had your own smart number you would still be able to get those leads but there are 3,000 agents in New Jersey. So, you know, the likelihood of you getting a whole lot of leads from EXP at no cost without, you know, just organically is probably very low at this point, just being honest and practical. <laughs> no, that makes sense. So if we send, if I send out a mass text, I'm just thinking about campaigns and things like that, like when it's geared towards campaigns specifically and a text goes out and they're responding, that response is still coming back to me though, correct? Like I, I've tested it on my, my own phone and I've received all the text messages. I guess my question is, are you noting that there might be a possibility that if I have a campaign and I'm sending out these text messages via the, the campaign in KB Court and I do not have a smart number, um, that there's a potential that these uh, customers are contacting or responding to someone else? So again, I don't have any evidence to suggest that the mass text feature or that the text feature doesn't work the way that it's supposed to. However, let's say an EXP has no control over this. A person can register on multiple agent sites over the course of time, whether that's done intentionally or not intentionally. So it's possible that that lead could be assigned to multiple agents. And if that's the case, if you are not using a smart number that's personal to you, maybe there is a very small possibility that that lead's response could get misrouted or double routed to every place where that lead is registered. Having your own personal smart number where all of that communication is centralized to a number that only you have access to is the absolute guarantee that um, those communications are funneled directly to you all the time. Like I Perfect. said, I'm, I'm not trying to suggest that there's evidence that this doesn't work, that you absolutely have to get the smart number because otherwise you're, you're putting your lead communication in jeopardy. I'm not suggesting any of that. I just think that if you're using KV Core um, significantly for text and phone, using a smart number generally is going to make it really easy for you to monitor and document that communication in the leads profile. And then if you take it that next step and personalize your smart number, it gives you the ability to create a number that's recognizable. So an, an area code 
that your sphere would recognize, number one. And number two, just ensures a level of insulation that the lead's communication can only go between you and the lead. Thank you. No, I appreciate that. Because I, I did notice that when it comes to like texting and stuff, it's monitored in KB Core versus if it's personal, then I have to go back and add notes. So that's yes. why I'm considering it. So, okay, that, that's a very valid point. Thank you. Yeah, it will automatically document that communication. So it does... And it not only documents that there was a text, I mean, you actually have the text communication. So you can see what your message was, what the response was, without having to worry about, oh, I've got all these texts on my phone. I've got to go back and update profiles to reflect what I've been talking with somebody about. Because let's say you are working with somebody who's 12 months from a home purchase. Um, you know, you want to make sure that you're reminding yourself of what's happening with that client and setting up reminders and tasks that you're continually following up. Because if, if somebody tells you, I'm going to be ready to buy a house next September, Millie, you are not waiting until next September to contact that client. You've got them on a campaign where you're staying in front of them and you're calling them at least once a month between now and September. So the ability to be able to do that from within KV Core over the course of a 12-month period really makes your life a lot easier than doing it within your own personal email or your own personal cell phone, and then having to document that communication as an extra step. Great. And then I guess the only other question I have with the smart number is when you're using a call feature, is that, I'm assuming that's through the KV Core app, and excuse my telephone background, but if I wanted to make a call, because I see it on the computer, um, but I haven't actually really played around with the app, to be very honest, I'm just more computer friendly. So would that communication go through the app to make the calls? So what can happen, you could sit right at your computer and you can make a call to that client right from your laptop. So if you have a headset and want to work from your laptop, or if you're working from the KV Core app, then you're literally going to make a call. But because the call is working through the app, the client will see the smart number and not your personal cell number. Perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Okay, so here's an idea. Again, no guarantees. If we just go back to the Home Search Leads platform, you get an idea that if you wanted to ramp up, if you enjoyed the experience you were getting at the $250 commitment, you do have the ability to ramp up and um, increase the number of leads. Again, if you are looking at more than five towns, then you really need to be in this premium space where you're spending at least $1,000 a month. Um, but up to that point, there are, I would definitely not recommend jumping into the deep end of the pool right off the bat. If you're an individual agent, absolutely start at the 250. Again, learn the flow. Make sure that you have a comfort level on what campaigns you've put into place, how those campaigns are working, what type of communication you're getting, what, what sense you're getting of how warm the leads are before you continue uh, consider ramping up your investment. Okay. The one other thing that I'll mention, because this is, again, information that I've shared with my team to set expectations, you have to recognize that for this program, where you're talking about Google ads, primarily drawing in buyers, you're looking at maybe a 2 to 3% conversion rate. So for every 100 leads that you are receiving, you're looking at the potential of 2 to 3 actual, you know, clients that you can work through the system and hopefully get to a closing. Um, so don't be discouraged. Don't think that for every 25 leads that you get every month, that you're going to get two to three to five closings each month. That's just not practical. And that's not what the industry broadly sees. So realizing two to 3% conversion, again, helps you set up your expectations. Okay. Now, I do want to just talk in contrast briefly about the express offers leads and what that might mean, because if you are pursuing that certification or you have it, this is going to be a different approach. It's managed from the same dashboard, but express offers leads will actually um, sit in Facebook. These are Facebook ads that are designed to draw people in on that need cash fast, ready to sell your home sort of mindset. Okay, I'm going to jump ahead for a second so I can actually show you maybe a couple of the um, Facebook ads that a, a visitor might see as they scroll through their feed. Okay, so again, notice how they are branded to Express Offers and to EXP. 
If you're not familiar with express offers, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail here, but very broadly, this is a program that's designed to take sellers through a non-traditional sale process where they might need to sell quickly, where they might know that a home needs a significant amount of repair, and maybe they're willing to compromise on price for the convenience of a quick sale or, or not having to be concerned with um, inspection and repairs that might come out of inspection, okay? So Express Offers takes those sellers and looks to match them up with iBuyers, um, meaning institutional buyers, primarily investors who are looking to purchase properties at essentially a discount so that they can renovate and either rent or flip those homes. From an agent standpoint, it's a very attractive program because you have the ability to not only secure a commission if you get that seller to close through express offers, but then you have the opportunity to pick up the relist if the institutional buyer has the intention of renovating and listing the property for resale. Okay, so, and there are advantages built into you as the original listing agent to secure that relist. So there's some. And again, we're gonna, we can talk about a, wh a whole lot more in detail um, in January when we look at these and some other programs. But the point is you have to be certified there to market and leverage this program in order to be able to take that and translate it to making it rain for lead generation, okay? Now, so again, first big difference, you're talking about specifically going after sellers as opposed to the home search leads, which was really more buyers, you know, homes for sale in Tom's River. Now you're really going after the people that are looking to sell their homes. Um, the, the spend is also going to be different. The minimum spend with the Express Offers program is going to be $500 a month as opposed to $250, but you still have the same flexibility, which is great. So you um, don't have to worry about, you know, a three to six month commitment. If you need to pause or cancel um, mid-month or at the end of a month, you can do that. The lead results are going to be very different from what you get with home search leads. Okay, so remember we said, if we go back to that slide for a second, $250 spend was going to get you roughly 15 to 25 new leads into your KV core that you are going to have to really strongly nurture, right? And oftentimes for an extended period of time. With express offers, you are looking at not guaranteed, but a much smaller number, typically going to be less than 10 leads per month. But the conversion rate of taking those six to 10 leads and getting a listing appointment out of it is gonna be significantly greater in a shorter period of time. So for every six to 10 leads, what they're seeing, not as a guarantee, I emphasize, but as a general practice, they are seeing one to three appointments come out of those six to 10 leads, okay? So again, a little bit more spend. You have to be certified in this program and you do not, ultimately, if you receive a lead through express offers, or if you first uh, present express offers as an option to a seller, that does not mean that they have to close through express offers programs. You might ultimately determine that that seller is still best served by a traditional sale or by a more traditional path. Okay. But it's just another way, another tool that you can leverage to to gather leads and pull them into your funnel, if that makes sense. Rochelle, you had a question. I already forgot my question. No, um, <laughs> uh, I too. Um, so one of them was, again, you made a comment about like, if you need to pause in the middle of the month for whatever reason, like how does that work with payment though? Like if I signed up with just say express offers and then I, you said something about if we needed to pause, we can do that? Like how does that work? Well, so again, remember, it's driven by clicks. So if you ended up needing to pause your campaign, maybe you were going away on vacation, um, or maybe you, you know, maybe you were going on an extended vacation for two or three weeks and knew that you weren't going to be available. Maybe you're going to be out of the country or whatever the case may be. So just recognize that that would absolutely be a case where you should see an invoice less than your $250 a month because you've 
paused your campaign for more than half the month's time okay. so that you're not, by default, you're just not going to get as many clicks as you would if you were running your campaign for the full 30 days. So in that case, you know, it makes sense that, again, an extended period of time, I don't know that I would pause a campaign just for a week. Um, that's personal choice. But if you knew it was going to be an extended period of time, you can leverage that pause function um, so that you're not paying for something that you can't utilize for that extended period of time. Got it. And do you have anybody in your group that does this with the express offers? Like, do you feel one is better? I mean, it sounds like this one's way better. You know, have, because you're you're targeting sellers as opposed to buyers. So I do have a few people on the team who are certified in express offers. I don't have anyone that I know of at this point that actually utilizes this specific program. Um, this is something that I can't, I don't think I can do at the team level because of the fact that there's that sort of level of complication of having to be certified. Right. Um, so I think this has to be done at the individual agent level. I definitely agree with you that um, if you can make the additional, you know, the higher investment that you are talking, talking about maybe more of a warm to hot lead here, as opposed to maybe a cool to warm lead with the home search leads that we talked about first. Right. Um, but it also has to do with the market that we're in. Um, so I think as we see a bit of a shift, um, as we've seen the impact of inflation, we've seen volatility to some extent in interest rates, the moratorium lifted and we're starting to see REOs maybe pick up a little bit again. I think it was probably harder to say invest in this program a year ago because you could, all you had to do is put a sign in your yard and you were going to get 50 people. Right. Right. Um, but, but as we shift back more towards the center, right, more towards what an average market looks like, then the number of people in this space who need a quick sale, who want a quick sale, who don't want the hassle, um, or who have a compelling reason why they can't go through a, a traditional sale could really benefit from this. And so you'll see greater interest from a click standpoint, greater interest from a tool belt, you know, from you as an agent presenting this program standpoint. Um, so all around, I think it makes more sense. Anytime that you have the ability to add to your tool belt, the more things that you can present to a seller, um, that you can ask the right questions, understand their circumstance, and have multiple solutions that puts you in a greater position for success. So now having said that, one of the things that's changing with this program is that there's a cost involved with certification where it used to be free. So that's something to think about too. You have to pay to get certified now and then pay to participate in the lead program. So that's something to, to give weight to as you make your, you know, your budgeting decisions. I have to find out more about that. So are the people that, because I am certified. So the people that are certified, are are they grandfathered in or something? Yes. Or... Yeah. Okay. I wonder what the I, cost, do you know what the cost is now? I don't have the cost numbers yet. Um, to be honest wow. with you, I just know that for express offers, Affinity, Relocation, and REO, that EXPCon was the last opportunity to get those certifications at no cost. Wow. So... And now, um, so if we have our certifications, we're good. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> okay, cool. uh -huh. Yep. So, and I will have more information on cost once we um, kick off in January with some of that training. But, but this is if you are utilizing, like if you're plugged in to the Express Offers program and you're keeping up on the training and utilizing the marketing materials then I think this is definitely an interesting program to consider. And the other thing you could always do is you could say, all right, if my budget, if 500 is sort of my max budget, then maybe I try this for a 90 day period and see what happens. And then if I don't find that I'm getting the results um, or maybe again, the timing isn't right for this type of campaign, maybe I cancel or pause this one and I switch over to the home search leads for $250 a month, save a little money. Again, getting a different type of lead. Exactly, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Are there any other questions about um, making it rain in general, about the, the dashboard, the um, 
how the leads work, setting up campaigns. The other thing that I can do when I send out a follow-up once we have the videos posted, I will reshare the link to our 18-month uh, nurture campaign, campaign that we're using in on our team. So again, once that seven days sort of lapses with that conversation starter, we're looking to convert them to something more long-term, built in with, with a lot of reminders for you to stay top of mind with that client. So I can share that link if you have any interest in looking at that campaign or copying it into your KD Core. You can do that with the link that I'll provide. Is it the same 18 month for the buyer that you had previously posted? Yep. Same. Okay, month. perfect. Yeah, I started utilizing that. So thank you again for that. Awesome. Yeah, that's exactly what we use. So it, it, um, and we, Part of the reason that we built that is because I had spoken with multiple team leaders from around the country who have had experience with Google ad lead generation, and they all had the same feedback that you're really practically looking at a 12 to 18 month um, turnaround, not a nine to 12 month turnaround in terms of nurture, um, that 12 to 18 month is more the expectation. So that's why we built out something that was longer term so that we weren't having to make a decision nine to 12 months, you know, after a campaign, do we restart the campaign at month 13? Um, so this way it takes us out a little bit longer, stretches out our education and our messaging to feel a little bit more consistent for a long period of time. Okay, so if there are no other questions on making it rain, um, what I thought that I would do is maybe pivot a little bit. And, um, and when we post these recordings, I'm going to split it up into two different sections so that you can either go back to making it rain, or if, if you have an interest in the site editor, um, you can just watch that particular uh, component of our training today as well. So site editor, um, Millie, you brought this up, and I know we sort of mentioned that if somebody wanted to dive in a little deeper in their website settings, that we could do that. So that's what I wanted to just take a few minutes to do today. Um, I'm just going to close out of here, and I'm going to get us over to um, 